Hello everyone, thank you for joining today's IFAX 2.0 webinar. My name is Bill Capello. I'm the Senior Director of Business Development and Software here at Invitro. And we'll spend today going through the new IFAX 2.0 features with you. Before we begin, I just ask that everyone mute their microphones. And if anyone has any questions throughout the duration of today's webinar, please feel free to use the webinar chat and we'll be sure to answer your questions promptly. Before we begin with an overview of BIPAX 2.0, we'll start with a company overview for those that are unfamiliar with Invitro as a whole, followed by a demo of highlight features and functionality within the new IFAX 2.0 platform. And although we'll make time at the end for question and answers, please feel free to provide any questions in the chat as they arise throughout the webinar. In Vicro as a company, we provide more than just software solutions. We are a total imaging solutions provider from providing contract services for design, execution, analysis of subcellular, the first in human, and large clinical imaging studies. We're headquartered in Boston, but we have satellite offices in New Haven, Connecticut, as well as London, UK. Our team, much like most imaging groups, is comprised of a multidiscipline group of image scientists across many disciplines, ranging from chemistry, biology, software engineering, mathematics, amongst many other disciplines across our staff members. Between both Invicro and M&I, a division of Invicro, we have well over 215 staff members here at Invicro. In support of our own services group, we built a software platform that supports really A to Z lifecycle management of data assets from an imaging study for both preclinical through clinical applications that same software platform we make available to our user base, uh, both within pharma and academia. And we've been designing this software platform over the last eight years to meet the specific needs of the life science industry. The types of projects uh, that we deliver software solutions for range from uh, research grade to enterprise level GXP compliant uh, archiving solutions, both to meet needs within the preclinical and clinical realms. It's like the makeup of our entire uh, organization. Our software team is a highly specialized multidiscipline group of computer scientists, image scientists, uh, and applications engineers that work hand in hand with both our internal teams on the services side as well as our external customers to meet specific imaging informatics needs of our external customers. So what is the IPAX? The IPAX is a sophisticated PAX supporting full data lifecycle management for imaging studies. So this can range from the actual image data, again, both preclinically, uh, in vivo, ex vivo image data through translational and into clinical uh, image data assets. In addition to the image data, uh, it also supports all the metadata around uh, these image files as well as non-image data as well, which makes our platform fairly unique in to be able to capture all of the data types that are generated uh, from an imaging study into a central platform that can be made available to a project team or imaging group. The organizational structure of the IPAX is project-based, which is uh, fairly different from a traditional hospital PAX in that you have many buckets or projects to organize your data. Uh, so as a, a PAX, as a traditional sense, is more hospital-driven in terms of the functionality and applications. Our IPAX is more project-driven and trial-based, study-based uh, driven in how we organize data. It is designed for both uh, single-site applications as well as enterprise deployments. And given that the IPAX is a web-based application, the accessibility of the software and the tools uh, is wide-ranging across the group. 
as I mentioned about metadata association, we have a flexible data point tagging structure that allows you to essentially capture any type of information associated with an imaging study. This can range from innate metadata associated with an image file to user-provided metadata about drug dosing or high-level project information, essentially anything that's relevant with an imaging study can be managed and reported on through the IPACS platform. What's very attractive about the IPACS for large institutions that are building out a more expansive infrastructure for managing all of their data assets is that the IPACS is vendor neutral and that it can integrate with many data types and asset management systems to facilitate easy and integrated communication between the IPACS and say a genomic system or an ELN or any information management system that you are trying to have more of an integrated uh, global solution of the way in which an organization manages their data around imaging and complement uh, resource groups that utilize and leverage imaging. In terms of high-level functionality, the IPACS has data management and mining capabilities for advanced searching of image files and the associated metadata across many different data assets. We've just recently built in the ability to visualize your image data directly within the browser uh, through leveraging our Google platform. And the reporting of the data within the IPACS is very strong across many different common formats from Excel, PowerPoint, PDF, uh, and we are continuing to expand those report templates to make it available to the users to more easily extract that information. So what's new in IPACS 2.0 for our current users uh, that are in IPACS 1.09, uh, and what we'll go through and demo the majority of these bullets in just a moment, is that we completely redesigned the user interface. Uh, we took feedback from our external and internal users and really tried to optimize not only just the look and feel, but the workflows in which how you go from A to Z to managing your data, all the way from data transfer through interacting with that data within the IPACS to accessibility of that data between our VivaQuant viewing and analysis platform to other platforms that may connect into the IPACS, as well as just general interaction with that data. We, over the past few years, have been presented with uh, new use cases of how the IPAC should handle data, and because of that, have made significant performance improvements into the IPAC to handle the growing uh, size of image data as well as the volume of image data in terms of the number of image files that people are continuing to put into the system. And working very closely, I might add, with many of our uh, colleagues on the IT side to optimize the back-end system architecture to support the front-end demands. And I'd say that's a very active uh, effort by the Invicro software support team uh, with many of our customers as uh, groups are expanding the usage and applications of IPAC at their own centers. Uh, we really thought about how the browser and the web disk interface with one another and are presented to the user, and we've consolidated and improved how a user interacts with data displayed both in a browser and a web disk, which we'll get to in just a moment. In terms of data mining, we've significantly improved the context-based queries and reporting capabilities of the IPACs to, again, make it easier for groups to extract the information that they're storing within the IPACs. And this can range from really any data asset that's stored uh, within IPACs, from non-image files, Word, PowerPoint, Excel-based uh, files, to image files and their associated metadata, and any type of user input metadata coming from uh, a web page entry or a more integrated uh, spreadsheet upload, API integration, or other system uh, integration. 
We've introduced a new pipeline processing framework, so this allows us to execute other programs within the IPACs to create, quote unquote, pipelines that allow someone to string together a series of tasks into a workflow uh, to execute within the IPACs or uh, to communicate back and forth between systems, uh, one of them being the IPACs and the other being a system uh, used for executing a particular task. And we've continued to expand the functionality of our uh, GXP archiving and clinical submission uh, platforms. So I will exit out of the PowerPoint and we'll go into a demo. So as you can see, right from the beginning of logging into an IPAX, we've changed the login screen and are using a completely new UI. As a reminder for those that are not using IPAX, the IPAX uses role-based authentication, so each user has their own level of permissions that grants them access across data stored in projects within the IPAX. So it allows groups to provide read, write, delete, uh, access to projects that they want users to have such access to. As you can see from initially logging in, we've redesigned the layout of how we present the IPAX dashboard, uh, which again, uh, just like in 109, is configurable to information that your group finds relevant to display upon initial login. Uh, we've also moved around uh, some of the access toolbars um, and menu options. As you can see now, we have a uh, dashboard and toolbar display on the left-hand side, uh, whereas before it was on the right to improve some of the real estate within the IPAC display. And then the biggest change that a group will notice when looking into the IPAX is we've consolidated the web disk and browser views into a single view called My Projects. And so we took a look back of how users were best using the IPAX and how they think about managing their data, and everything really centralizes around the concept of a project. And thus, we wanted to reduce some of the confusion in previous versions of what types of data should be stored in a browser versus a web disk. And as you can see here, I think we've addressed that nicely by replacing browser and web disk with a parent access of my projects, which then populates a list of recent projects you have access, as well as projects you may have tagged as favorites, which is a new feature to give immediate access to projects that you're uh, working on or have a particular interest in. So if I click in one of these projects here, Spec CT, again, you'll be presented with a new display feature, uh, which is an overview page, followed by access to the browser, web disk, and study planner. And so if I go back to the overview page, Again, we're taking concepts from the main login dashboard display to display relevant information associated to a particular project and to give high-level statistics on what data is stored within this project. We've also added a summary data points widget, which will pull project-level data point information to display on this overview page. So as an example you see here, I have a project summary data point that is detailing the high-level study description and the study protocol outline. Just like the forms and how users interacted with those forms and leveraged those forms in 1.09, uh, in 2.0, a user can customize and configure these forms to have specific fields of interest that allow a site or a group of users to capture the most relevant information. And as we've expanded our reporting capabilities, all of this information that's quote unquote tagged to a project 
or to a given image file can be pulled back out easily through queries and reporting on the IPACs. So you can envision now that you have a much easier infrastructure to do uh, basic or more advanced data mining on surveying the type of data that you have stored within your IPACs. In addition to a dashboard display, we've introduced the concept of executing project level actions. And so you'll see here uh, from uh, utilizing the IPAC sync functionality to generating project reports, as well as the ability to run uh, jobs, as I mentioned, the new pipeline capability, uh, you'll have that functionality directly presented at a project level. As we shift over to looking into the browser view, we have dramatically improved the way in which you interact with data from the browser view. One of the most uh, obvious changes is we've added the advanced search capabilities to every project so that you no longer are navigating to a different location within the IPACs to do advanced queries, but can execute them directly <laughs> from within a given project. So for instance, if I needed to query on patient ID or build a more complex query, I could do that. Another improvement we made to the IPACs is that you can also query uh, data points directly from this page as well and no longer just rely upon reports to access that information. In terms of interacting with the metadata displayed in the browser view, you'll notice that much is the same, although we've added the ability to do sorting within a given patient study series or image level display, as well as can toggle between displaying just study level, series level, or image level information. And by information, we mean the primary metadata tags in the DICOM header. So again, this should provide an easier way for you to locate and find the data of interest, as well as manipulate the data to best identify which data you have in a given project. From a reporting standpoint, we've also introduced some easier report templates that will be made available to every user to access information that's associated to a given image file. So as an example, this is a SPECT image that was analyzed in our viewing and analysis software, VivaQuant. I can select at a study series or image level. In this case, I'll select at the series level because I want to report on quantitative information that was generated in the VivaQuant. When you right click, you'll be presented with many options for interacting with that data from moving the data to generating public links, which are features that were present in 109. Here, what is different with the generate report option is that it presents different report templates. So here, I want to pull quantitative information stored at the image level. I can select which metadata tags that I want to have displayed in a report, and then also select the relevant IPAX data points that I want to aggregate into report as well. So we're starting to move towards giving the user more flexibility and control over what data they put into their own reports. So I'll submit. And then show just a basic output that represents some of the capabilities 
of the spreadsheet reporting. And so here, for this given image, it's showing the quantitative output of a heart ROI with the meaningful quantitative statistics in the subsequent columns. I will add that we do have more control over Excel to introduce plotting capabilities, as well as a majority of the Excel functions that you would execute manually that we can introduce into the report <laughs> templates, which should give users more control over how they aggregate data within the Excel spreadsheets. If we move over to the web disk view, we see we have improved uh, the UI look and feel of how data is displayed in the web disk. And again, as a reminder, the web disk allows you to store not just image files, but really any type of data that's associated to a given project. So for instance here, I may transition over to a thumbnail view. I have some snapshot histology slides. If I click on an image, it will render a larger preview of that image with relevant info on that file, as well as we just try to make easier and more intuitive for how a user would then want to interact with this file. So in this case, they may want to share the data through our public link infrastructure, which allows you to present access to data without providing a login account. And that access can be whoever has access to the link, or you can associate a password with that link or embed within a mail or have some type of time window of when that link expires. Again, it's very useful for sharing data that exceeds email size restrictions, or you just want to quickly share a data file uh, with a user. From a searching standpoint on the web disk, we've also improved the way in which a user may search uh, for data. So for instance here, if I look for file name stain A, I'll see that return populated in the list below, and then can navigate to that project which contains that image file, or click on the link to download the file directly. Going back to some of the query capabilities within the IPAC, <laughs> if, for instance, I'm not familiar with what project my data is located in, I may want to utilize the query functionality to locate my data, to navigate into the specific project containing such data. So here I have a return on my query of this particular patient ID 1001. If I right click and click on go to browser, it will navigate me to the project which contains that particular data set uh, in the browser or web disk view that I select. An additional and new module that we've introduced is addressing a fundamental issue that was presented to many of our users with how they best quickly visualize and review image data. It's a challenge with many software providers trying to provide a platform to best visualize data and complement functionality that exists in local uh, machine softwares, much like our local uh, VivaQuant viewing and analysis platform. And instead of trying to re-engineer a viewer within the browser, we're really letting technology catch up to the needs and allowing us to access a fully functioning VivaQuant directly within the IPACs. And so right now, this is starting up an instance of VivaQuant running on a server and tunneling in and rendering the display of VivaQuant. As you can see, it loads the data set that I've just populated and from a performance standpoint, 
uh, we've seen very good results of how a user can interact with the data from basic scrolling uh, to more advanced applications of how you might want to replicate workflows done in local copies of VivoQuant in the VivoQuant launched in IPAX. And so a basic use case here might be from a review standpoint, after inspecting uh, the data, you may want to annotate on that image. to associate to that image file for review later. And to continue on the use case, you then may want to aggregate information associated to that image, much like we had reported on analysis data with the SPECT image a few moments ago. So here I'll go back to my reporting tool is an image level data point. It finds the data point that I just associated and will generate a report that captures the primary metadata fields as well as the annotation that I just provided to the image. Now this is a fairly simple use case, but you can see how this could expand into more advanced data curation workflows as well as uh, just having an easier way to aggregate information associated uh, with an image file. That data, as you can see now, can be associated not just from uh, working with the data within IPAX uh, by entering data within forms, but also now having access to a viewer directly within IPAX improves <coughs> the functionality from an access data accessibility standpoint and collaborative standpoint uh, with end users. And we will be continuing to invest in the VivoQuant running within the IPAX uh, module as we see many more applications for uh, quick data review workflows to uh, basic data analysis uh, to then also just more general collaborative tools to make available to our user base. The last component I wanted to address in this webinar was the improvements we've been making to our study planner platform. The study planner was created to address a need that prior to image acquisition, you have a wealth of data that a group may want to associate to a project to a subject or to any data type captured by the IPAX before that data is even generated. And so this allows not just basic scheduling capabilities, but also a means by which a user can associate relevant metadata in a imaging trial. So here you see different displays of a calendar uh, so we're mimicking a lot of standard calendar functionality, but where we really deviate and extend uh, functionality is through the ability to tag metadata relevant to an image study. So as an example here, if I click on this event that is scheduled for today, and I want to add edit data points, those same data point forms that I've been showcasing at different levels on the browser and project high level overview page can be used to associate additional uh, information, again, that you may not have the opportunity to associate pre-image acquisition. The other relevant use cases for those in the preclinic that have use cases of imaging multiple animals per uh, image session, that image acquisition consoles don't provide the means by which to tag the injected dose or the weight information to all these individual animals uh, or subjects, 
in a given image. And as you go through the pre-processing tasks of separating out these subjects uh, from an image, you want to be able to still have their respective uh, metadata that's important for downstream analysis workflows available to tag within the image. And so the study planner allows that ability to make that data available in those pre-processing workflows. So I'm just going to associate some uh, basic information here. and save that to this particular animal, 1.1.1. And then just as we've built in a nice reporting infrastructure around the image data, we built that same reporting structure for study planner data. So as a basic use case, I'll select maybe a study here, demo study, click on generate report, and now you'll see that data point to which we just entered is now available in a high-level display across all the imaging events in that study. And because we're capturing not just uh, what animals were scanned, but also camera, uh, which camera is being used, uh, which operator is being used, we can also use the reporting capabilities for uh, camera utilization and resource management, as well as the reports uh, some basic uh, billing functionality uh, to extract how many hours certain pieces of equipment or PIs have been on uh, a given system or utilizing a particular resource. And again, we'll be continuing to expand uh, the capabilities of the study planner uh, as we work with more sites. So this concludes the basic overview of high-level functionality and highlight features within the IPAX. I just want to point out where you can find more information about Invicro and our software. Uh, and particularly here, uh, these are links specific to our software platform, not just the IPAX, uh, but the VivaQuant platform. We post all of our training materials on our YouTube channel. Uh, we have a blog which we contribute uh, advanced use cases of how both to use our IPAX and VivaQuant platform uh, and have help guide manuals. And of course, please feel free to always reach out to support at Invigro.com uh, with any questions for supporting your use cases and workflows within the software.